On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we are here with my new fire truck I bought for $3,000. And we're going on a tour of everything there is to know about the fire truck. What is going on guys? I am Watch Chair Go, and today we are here with my 1977 Mac CF 600 fire truck. And in yesterday's video, I was told it was a Detroit diesel with an air starter. It's not, it is an electric start and uh, it's actually a Mac built diesel. So that's kind of weird. I, I expected it was gonna have a cat when I bought it. And then they said it was Detroit diesel when I picked it up. But what we found out is it's actually, it's a Mac engine, which is really crazy. Mac built the whole truck most of these uh, fire trucks and stuff like that are conversions, like Grumman builds them. That was what their new fire truck was. Lots of fire trucks out there. And a lot of them are like, they buy a cabin chassis and build a fire truck. This is a 100% Mac truck. Mac engine, Mac branded, Mac diesel. You can see here on the pump station itself, it says Mac <laughs> fire apparatus. We've got a chassis number 1987, date of development 524.77. So before we get back to all this good stuff, let's just, we'll start in the cab and work our way back. Or let's start at the front. The front seems like the most appropriate place to start on my big Mac truck because it has this beautiful Mac badge. It has the Mac dog off of all the semis up here. Beautiful Mac letter. It's such a good looking truck. What a look. It's incredible with this big, giant like stainless front end up here and that old federal siren that doesn't run anymore. You can turn it but it doesn't run. That's one thing. If there's something I'm fixing on this truck, it's that, it's gotta work. So we have this stunning like cab over look. You're sitting over the front axle, tow hooks that could tow. It looks like a small mountain over there. We've got fog lights, we've got LED emergency flashers, red and blue. We have air operated windshield wipers, dual lights. Those are your uh, hand lights there. So you can look down in the ditches, you know, put a spotlight wherever you want. Mac original mirrors. Check that out. They don't do that anymore. That is cool. And those awesome bullet lights up there with our rotating beacons. This is E1. You can see E1 all the way around. It is engine one and also pumper one on the radio. Arcadia Fire and Rescue 1285-1. This thing, it's a stunning old truck. And I absolutely love it. I do have one broken fog light lens there. Might be able to get the lens. Might have to swap out the whole fog light, who knows. Even the turn signals look cool. They've got a little directional look to them. Headlights work and everything. We've got a vent here you can flip open for extra air on your knees. And uh, another one over here that's probably the intake air for the heater. Here's that vent in action. I know it's really hard to see, but yeah. All the air comes through that. Here's our door plate, June 1977. 35,000 pounds, 12,000 on the front, 23,000 on that rear axle. A monster of a truck. Here's our VIN plate with, uh, doesn't actually have the GVWR on there or anything, but we got crank windows, everything works perfectly. We got the side window, that works perfectly as well, so you can get a bunch of airflow. Door handles, nice door cards, still in pretty good shape there. Before we actually go inside, you can see the shore power, it auto ejects with, it has like a solenoid that can kick out the cord when you uh, hit a button. And we also have our shore air connection there. Okay, let's hop in the cab. That is where the tour needs to start. We've got these big old seats here. Driver's seat is perforated, which is pretty cool. You can see all the little dots in it. We'll hop right in, fire up our batteries. There we go, both batteries. And we got a cab light, so hopefully you guys can see a little bit better. So directly in front of me, we have the gigantic flat steering wheel, which uh, is great. It does everything it's supposed to do. There's our starters right there. Yep, <laughs> they, they were A and B engine start. Uh, turn signals, you can see they indicate when they're flashing and you pull out for hazards. So there's both. And to get rid of the hazards, you just flip up, cancel, flip up, flip down, whatever you want up here in the gauge cluster. It's beautiful, simple, does what it's supposed to do other than tell you the mile per hour, that doesn't work. It's funny, that's got the, the Mac dog in it. Uh, let's look at this. I don't think the high beams work at all. So there's our panel lights. When the lights are on, the anti-lock light is on. Oil pressure, water temp, a sun tack, old school right there. Air pressure, uh, we've got 
dual needle air pressure gauge there to indicate everything going on in the system. Voltmeter, fuel level. We still have a quarter tank, so it really doesn't blow through that much fuel. The truck gets five to six miles a gallon according to the fire department. And uh, I mean, that should be expected with a truck that's this big. It's like driving a house down the road. All right, let's kill these lights and move on to our wipers here. So these are the windshield wipers. And to use the windshield wipers, you pull up <laughs> and you push down to put them back. And the driver one doesn't typically work. There we go, it actually went down that time. You have to manually do the driver one, it won't rotate like we talked about earlier. This is the wiper sprayer and the wiper sprayer makes a bunch of noise but doesn't do anything. Hazards again, which is weird because we have the hazards on the turn signal. I think that might have been disconnected. Uh, master power switch, clips. I don't know what clips are. Honestly, no clue. Uh, we have a cigarette lighter right there, 12 volt accessory power, whatever you want. Headlights, tail lights, and all the rest of the markers and everything around that switch. Uh, down here, emergency engine stop. I'd assume that's a fuel cut if it's a runaway. We have a fuel heater for when it's freezing cold. Hit a button and uh, heat the diesel because obviously diesel will gel in those cold temps, cold climates. Here we've got our engine stop, pull out for that. Just another fuel cut, I would assume. I think it's a solenoid based one, air solenoid based one there. This is our high idle right there, pull out. I mean, it's just a throttle. So the more you pull, the more throttle you get. Defrost and uh, fan switch, turn for the cabin fan. It doesn't, doesn't want to turn on today. Oh, here, there you go. There's your fan for the heater. Okay, so we'll leave the master on there. Ah, the welder's firing up over there. They're building more of the balcony. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. We're gonna keep right on rocking on the fire truck. Uh, idle down on the welder, that helps out a lot. The rest of the driver's side, we've got uh, an instruction manual here that tells us how to use the entire thing. It's all handwritten, pretty cool. It's under that flap, there's a sun visor. And here are our working, these do work. Uh, well, doesn't wanna work today, but uh, it, it's been on a few times. There's our, our lights that we talked about earlier. Here's all the emergency section. It's always on its own master. Hit this switch. You can hear like a solenoid pull in down there on the solenoid panel. That's all of the uh, electronics. So it has solenoids for the master and probably a solenoid for the lights or something like that. Uh, and there's our street sweeper siren and all that good stuff. Here we have the rotating beacons, the front flasher. Those are the LED converted ones. Fog lights and the siren horn. Uh, that's the electronic one. And this is the mechanical one here. Let's see if the fog lights work. The one fog light works, the one that still has a lens on it. Here's some of the cool stuff, beacons. Beacons, baby. Oh man, that's cool. And here's all of our LEDs. You can see the LEDs putting in work up front. And behind, oh, those things are bright. You can see those everywhere. And yeah, fog lights, we check those out. Siren horn, we'll hit the button. And there's a gain control, we can turn that up and down. That might just be for the PA mic, but it does exist. And then uh, that ding is the mechanical federal siren on the front right there. That thing pulls some current. You can actually see the battery voltage light come on. Turn all this back off, all of our emergency section. Of course, we still haven't really left my seat because we have the rail air horn right here. Wait. I was out of air, so I started it up and you can hear the low air alarm coming on and off right there. Just a pressure switch to tell you that you might not have brakes or your brakes are gonna lock on, that is. So um, you, you want air. It's pretty critical in big trucks like this. There's the idle adjustment, like I said. Run the truck wide open if you want. We're up to about 90 PSI. It should let us run our air horn. There we go, perfect fire truck sound. All right, here in the glove board, we got a cigarette lighter, the electronic one down there in the corner, if you can see it, some rope and a cigarette lighter again, a, a little butane one. If you're gonna put out fires, you might as well be able to start them too. Obviously firefighters are around a lot when you're starting fires too. Uh, it's just good to have them around. They got the fire knowledge. So we've got the Mac label here with a bunch of instructions, a bunch of the pump instructions right there. This is our uh, roof vent. You can set the roof vent to whatever you want, get a bunch of airflow in the cabin, it is awesome. Before we get too far away from my seat, of course we have a fire comm system, a complete fire comm system. They left all of it for me, with, which is amazing. You know what these headsets cost for like a side-by-side? -side? Like $300 a pop. 
And these have uh, push to talk, uh, volume settings per headset, like it is really cool. And it's in here for all four seats and there's an exterior hookup as well. So you can grab like this headset. It looks like they lock it. No, they don't. You can actually go plug this in beside the pump controls and uh, talk to the whole cabin while you're like hanging off the side of the truck or whatever you want. So you've got comms everywhere you need in the truck. Super cool. Down here we have the gear shifter. It's an automatic. This automatic rocks. It got us home like no problem. Super easy to drive. PTO controls right here. You uh, put this thing in neutral, throw on the PTO, like back to drive, and uh, you can kick in your PTO and run the pump. Here's our federal siren controls right there. There you go, push that button for instant siren. Should be volume for the front speaker. I have a few more setups like this, uh, late model Whalen ones, and uh, those have dual 100 watts, so this should be at least a single 100 watt siren. It, it gets after, it's pretty loud. So over here, you can see that they probably had all the radios mounted along here. They took the radios, radios cost a ton of money. I would have taken them too, obviously. And uh, here's our fire comp system for inside. And you might be able to link that back to the actual uh, trucks radio. I'd, I'd assume that it does. This is probably power to a Motorola radio. They love to use that connector, 12 volts right there. Uh, here's the heater hanging out right here. A grab handle for when things get wild and that big Streamlight flashlight, the big explosion proof one that like slides in here and it charges right there. You push that and you can slide it out, locks in and everything. I need to buy another one of those because I wanna have that in here. Those flashlights are awesome. They're super expensive, like 300 or $400, but I think I have to do it. Uh, you tell me, do I have to do it? I think I have to do it. Sliding that glass between the engine compartment and the box for the other crew here. Uh, this slides both ways. It is incredibly hot back there when this thing's running. I do not know how those guys rode back there. That's impressive. And they were like, there's no AC, it gets hot. They were not kidding. It, it is on fire back there. All right, this thing's on shore power, so everything should be okay. I'm gonna leave it on and uh, let's head towards the back. Back door, here we go. Here's some of that shore power. You can plug stuff in here. Uh, like probably another battery charger, but it does have an onboard battery charger, they told me. So you flip these down and those should be the batteries. Wow, that's tight. There you go, there's one of the 12 volt batteries. This truck's been converted. It was originally a six volt truck. Now it is a 12. Man, those are some big old battery cables. What a tank. All right, we'll put those back. Head on inside here, we got our ax clip because you need your door breaching ax or whatever you need that for. It's got a pocket right there so that nobody gets cut because axes should be super sharp. And then your seat with your oxygen tank holder and all that good stuff. And uh, you can see there's comm plugins back there, a speaker, GE speaker up there to talk to the crew back here. More power, 120 volt power. And uh, it's, that's just sitting in there, all that good stuff. It's old Polaroid of how to hook up the batteries. It's pretty cool. Tons of storage, flip up, glass help vent this while you're riding along because i'm sure it's got to be terrible riding in here with uh, no ac so you can flip these vents open and also this window slides open as well pretty typical pickup truck style window right there so that's really cool you can open everything up and get a lot of airflow through the engine compartment all right here's what a lot of you guys are here for there's a big diamond plate doghouse right here it actually locks shut you can clip it down make sure this doesn't bounce at all but what we're gonna have to do is push that seat out of the way. Now that we have this thing open, check that bad boy out in all of its glory. This is the Mac ENDT, the turbocharged inline six. It's a monster. You can see the turbo kind of peeking out over there under this huge air cleaner. The air cleaner has its own stack, an intake stack that comes out of the cabin there. Look at that. It's just beautiful how this thing's put in here. Then we have the air feed over to the turbos. Turbo, it's just one giant turbo. And here's our intake. Tons of intake clamps on there. There's three intake clamps. That one looks, yeah, that one looks a little suspect. There's two intake clamps doing work. And uh, we got a, a water rail along there. Injection rail up above that. This thing's cool. Here's our 12 volt alternator that was swapped in. We'll give the camera a second so you guys can see hiding down there. High voltage alternator. And then there's one of those massive starters right back there. That thing is huge. Transmission starts here and goes on back. It's also gigantic. There's so many solenoids on this thing. I mean, those are probably the starter solenoids. They're gigantic. And then there's another starter solenoid on top of that thing that's also gigantic. Everything's huge on this truck. Everything is huge. 
The cool thing is you can kind of just stand back here and actually service this thing, a lot of this truck. You don't have to get underneath it. And I did know for a fact that I was never getting underneath this truck because it weighs so much, 33,000 pounds. I mean, I know those 10K lifts are probably underrated a bit, but I'm not lifting this up. <laughs> All right, slam that bad boy back shut. You have to kind of move that seat every single time. Uh, all the lights in here work, all these cabin lights. Hit the switch, boom. These things are very well designed. You can actually see everything that's going on. So that is the cabin. I've never actually opened any of the other doors. Let's head over there. Wheels, these are 20s, just like a bro truck. We've got 11 by 20s on there. They're huge tires and uh, huge wheels too. Well, let's come over to this side, actually go inside. Oh. So here we have some extra oil and transmission fluid. They hooked us up with some ATF and some Rotella. Been running Rotella all its life, so you know, it's that good stuff. Ah, lights. It looks like we could recover this panel here. Also, these side windows are sliding too to give you some air when you're burning up inside here. Coolant fill all the way up there. The pump control panel, this is the piece de resistance on these trucks. We got the panel lights. We'll flip that on right there. You gotta have that when it's nighttime. You don't have lighted gauges because obviously lighted gauges are a bit of a luxury compared to this. We got pump heat here. Comes straight to life. It's got a big fan in there. Uh, you got to have that for when you're in cold climates, operating and stuff like that. Everything's got to work in the cold, no matter how cold it is. The pump itself was replaced. Uh, 629.89. That's when they put this uh, certification plate on it. It shows the GPM, the flow rate at each uh, pressure going in and also engine RPM. So at like 150 PSI, uh, it's a thousand gallons a minute. If you got the engine running at 1,420 RPM, don't run the engine over 2,300 or 2,350. The original pump was 2,300. So cool. Upgraded pump, or at least a later pump. Custom fire. We've got a matching sun tack that works perfectly. Uh, the Hobbs meter, look at the hours on this thing. 1,149 hours. That's 47 days of runtime on this thing. It has put in work. This thing must have saved a lot of houses and fields and farms in its day. Oil pressure, water temp for the engine hiding out back here. And the other thing related to the engine right here, we got the throttle. It's a twist pull out style, push in to fully release the throttle. So that's uh, another throttle up for when you got the pump rocking and rolling. Pump suction and PSI, pump discharge and PSI. It's all actually labeled. It's nice because it's those old school labels and they have it all worn off like a lot of them do. Here's the discharge pressures, one, two. On this side, there's one and two. And then on the other side, we have another set of discharges, three and four. They're all two and a halfs. And I think there's suction on both sides as well. A dual suction setup so you can pull from either way if you need to. Here's the relief if the pressure gets crazy with stats and uh, you could probably put a pressure gauge and a vacuum gauge on there if you needed to. Real rewind. So up in here, we'll hit power. We have, hit this and this, fire hoses. <laughs> Look at that. You never get fire hoses. And uh, I mean, these things, the coolest, the coolest thing here as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay, it's hard to do this with one hand, but you hit this button and it pulls the hose right back in. And water's coming out as I do it. Okay, one more hit. <laughs> All right, you can see it works great. There's the hose all reeled up. And there's a matching one on the passenger side as well. So you can pull two hoses out and it's got feeds to make sure everything goes in nicely. And here's the cross lay hoses. These are the ones where you uh, just kind of flip them back and forth and you can throw it either way. And these are the outputs for those. It's a much smaller hose, one and a half. And uh, up there, you can see right in the middle, there's a bit of a hole and that's where those hook up. And then you can just grab the hose and run. And uh, that has rollers to get those out nicely. Here's the valves for these. You can turn on the passenger valves and the driver valves, uh, all the output discharges right here and uh, drains and everything like that for when you're done. Pump drain, there's drains for everything, of course. Uh, water tank to pump, rear suction. There's another suction on this thing. I mean, it's all pretty self-explanatory. It's all labeled. Tank fill, I would assume you pull that and instead of going from suction right back to the discharges, uh, it just fills the tank up for you. And then you can sit here and watch the water level in the tank. Okay, right here, we have something very near and dear to my heart, a Motorola radio handset with a frequency selector and speaker volume. 
So you could grab this and it would go hot on the radio and you could talk to fire station or the firefighters on portable, whatever you needed to. Uh, that does not work anymore. We'll come around here, shut the lights off, shut the real winder off there. Oh, here's what I was talking about inside. That's for your headset. You can plug in right there and keep talking to the crew. Uh, here in D3, driver three, you can see that the wires were cut off the old Motorola handset, but we have a foam system for putting out bonfires and uh, other stuff. Really cool. Anyway, that's the foam sprayer. I don't want to touch it. And we have a nozzle, monster nozzle here. Quick attack, look at that. It's on reflective too. It's on reflective vinyl. 766 fits one and a half inch turbo jet nozzles. Pretty cool. That is a monster right there. All right, here's D1 or driver one. Of course, the hatch struts are bad in true watch chair or go style. It needs those all the way around. I bet they're kind of hard to find, but we will probably find them. And we have all of our oxygen tank holders here for spares for those. Some cups back there. Close this. Their cabinets are lighted, which is super nice. Everything closes nicely. This is our diesel fill. Diesel right inside there. It's all brass. Uh, I did notice this leaks pretty badly, the coupler that uh, goes into the tank. I know it's really hard to see that, but there's a coupler right there and it's kind of leaking out of the bottom, so that all needs replaced. Big old beautiful Mac hubs. Another compartment, storage, whatever you want. You can slide these shelves up and down, light it on top and light it on bottom. Uh, but we need to get another uh, lens and light bulb for that thing. Here's driver four. And this one spans the entire rear, double door, so you can run things end to end back there. This compartment is gigantic. Uh, yeah, you can see the tow hook even. So we'll open up the next door. They have the mats in there, so nothing rattles around, it gets ruined. This is rear one. Open up this giant door. We've got more storage. A tow hook that runs to the frame. Monster of a tow hook there. Uh, this looks like a, the rear suction drain right there. It's just a manual valve you can open up if you need to drain down this suction or fill for it, whatever you're using it for. Uh, we'll go back to the deck here in just a second. So here's passenger two. This one of course connects all the way. My brother wants me to get ladders for this thing and he's probably right. Look at all this foam. There's tons of foam for the foam system in here. And then Sun Prairie Fire Department. They must have been the owner before Arcadia. Obviously lights, straight through storage. Tons of storage in this thing. Tons of storage. Okay, here's passenger one. And the light is not working in this one. It might need a bulb, but she's got a bunch of storage in there. And our passenger side pump control is much simpler. The two discharges, the valves are on the other side. Drains over here and another suction. Uh, big old lever for open and closed for that valve right there. And uh, this is another like main tank connection there. Here, you can look inside and see the actual pump. So there you go, there's our PTO driven pump. That thing is huge, so cool. And there's all of its connections to the tank. And you can see back into the engine right up front. Got the lights on up there still. It'll, weirdly, it looks like the engine compartment lights are just staying on. The passenger side rear winder control, so you can roll your hose back, hit that button. Obviously you guys saw it work on the other side, I'm not gonna do it over here. And uh, steps up the cab to get to your cross lay hoses. Here's our ladder setup right here. I'm gonna close all these doors. And then you hop up here on the back. We've got stairs on both sides, also dual tone reverse beepers. So there's one over here and one on the other side. And uh, they beep at different times because they're just random. And it gives you like a nice dual tone. You really know something's coming. Here we have switches up here. That one's burnt out. But here's our uh, area, floodlights, whatever you want. They do work. They do work. Welder shut down. It looks like uh, we might have like a teak floor up here for the hose storage and whatever else we got going on. Uh, here's the water feeds to the hose reels. You can see them come out and out of the pump and up to the reels. And then here is our tank fill. You can see right down into the, the tank a little bit there. Close everything back up. The top of the truck is artwork as well with our flip up vents. And then there's the intake and air horn, beacons, all that good stuff. Antenna for the radio. You can see they had labels for what goes where. 400 foot of 1.5 inch hose and 400 foot of 2.5 inch hose. All these lights work, all the LED flashers work. I mean, everything works on this thing. It's cool. More stairs, climb up wherever you need to. So that is basically a complete tour 
of a fire truck. Most fire trucks are pretty much like this. They all need to be kind of the same, right? Little differences here and there. Obviously all the newer ones have technology and more power and they're turned up and do more. Four wheel drive, sometimes this is an old two wheel drive dually. Uh, it's a tank, it's great. If there was a Doug score, I mean, you guys know it would be 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It'd be the highest thing on the Doug score. There's just nothing better. Speed, it's wonderful. I mean, it does 60 mile an hour like nothing. Shifts hard, uh, comfort, unmatched. It glides down the road. It's pretty funny with all this giant leaf spring suspension. Uh, technology, it's got buttons that are illegal to have when you're operating on a road. Uh, it's just size, incredible. Fuel efficiency, incredible, five, six miles a gallon. I mean, this thing, it rocks. And I, I'm so excited to have it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Those guys are saying I should make it a mobile tool truck. I guess one more time, we'll run you through the old fire truck startup procedure here. Here's your battery selector. You got A and B. This is, uh, every boat has this, so you should probably be used to this. Uh, so off, B, A, there's both. So we're rocking both batteries. Neutral, make sure you're in there. And uh, you should have left it in neutral anyway, because there's no park. Uh, master on, here all the solenoids pull in, all that good stuff. And then come over here, uh, glow plug heat, I would assume is there. I haven't seen any buttons for that or anything, but hit a starter, whichever one you want, A or B. She fires right up. Let your air pressure come up before you try to move anything. There's our low air light. And here's that rear throttle on the pump control panel too. There, there goes the pump. You heard it engage. There was a second, oh, and the pump's running. And then you'd have to add some throttle and go to work, put out some fires. So there you have it, a tour of my new fire truck. Like I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but like firefighters, they, they some of them just don't have big enough budgets. And Arcadia is one of those cities that could probably use some more budget because their new truck is a 1992. So like I said in the last video, go back to that other video, Get it to 100,000 likes. For every 100,000 likes, I'll give another thousand dollars to the fire department. I don't care how I need to get it up to them. I will get it done and uh, we'll try to help them out. This thing looks like it's got 40,000 miles on the clock. What a beast. I mean, before the speedo stop, that is. <laughs> it's so cool. I just. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjr.com, where you get cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I'll talk to you next time. I was really worried about needing that shore air uh, because it's very cool that you can keep air in the tanks all the time. So it's ready to go. You don't have to like sit there. As a fire department, you can't sit there and wait on the air compressors to finish pumping up the air tank so you can leave. Uh, they're ready to go. For me, it doesn't matter. It's got a built-in charger when it's on shore power. And as long as the engine starts up, I'm good. I'll have air. So. I'm happy with that. 672 cubic inch or 11 liter diesel, turbocharged 11 liter, a monster of an engine. And I mean, like I said in the first video, about a million horsepower and two to three million foot pounds of torque. This thing's, I can't believe how fast it is. It is cool.